repeated warnings of an imminent energy crisis. US-based corporation granted a controlling stake of Sri Lanka's energy supply, while India is given access to manage an oil tank complex in close proximity to a vital natural harbour. Amidst all these occurrences, Sri Lanka's ailing economy continues to plunge into further chaos. Economists opine power outages, endless gas queues, acute shortages of chemical fertilizer despite permission being granted to import and companies limiting the import of milk powder is all a result of the deepening economic crisis. Sri Lanka's dollar reserves, an essential counter asset to import goods, depleted drastically in the recent past. Although our foreign reserves propelled to 3.1 billion US dollars following a 1.5 billion dollar currency swap with China, concerns continue to be raised on its adequacy to enable Sri Lanka's economy to recover from its perilous state. Interestingly, when analyzing the central bank's weekly economic reports, it is starkly evident that our gold reserves too seem to be declining rapidly. To provide further insight into this claim, in December 2021 alone, gold reserves worth 206.8 million US dollars had been sold. According to Economy Next, 3.6 tons of gold were sold in 2020. However, Governor of the Central Bank, Ajit Nivad Cabral, supporting the sale of gold, says it would enable for greater liquid reserves, which is essentially more cash in hand. Speaking to Economy Next, Cabral has said, and I quote, when reserves reduce, we reduce the gold holding, adding, and I quote, we bought gold when foreign reserves were going up, unquote. In the midst of all these complexities, Sri Lanka is scheduled to settle international sovereign bonds worth 500 million US dollars on the 18th of this month. Taking to Twitter, the governor of the central bank reiterated today that the 500 million US dollar international sovereign bonds will be settled, noting it would be done on the 22nd of January. Despite this claim, economists and other industry professionals bear a contradictory view of this decision. They have hinted at Sri Lanka's economic woes deepening further if 500 million US dollars of limited forex reserves are utilized for such a payment. As such, they have repeatedly urged for the settlement of ISBs to be postponed. International sovereign bonds are a way of borrowing in global financial markets. And unlike bilateral debt, the repayment of all the capital is due in one shot. Sri Lanka is due to pay 500 million in one maturing international sovereign bond in the next week. That 500 million, uh, if used uh, for four, can buy five months of it. If used for pharmaceuticals, can buy one year of it. If used for dairy products, can supply one and a half years, and for fertilizer, two years uh, of it. So it is a very large amount that Sri Lanka is preparing to settle when the essential needs of the economy are remaining unmet due to the lack of usable reserves. Currently, Sri Lanka has a choice. If it continues to settle international sovereign bonds, reserves will fall to a level where Sri Lanka becomes bankrupt. If Sri Lanka chooses to ask for a restructure of its debt, uh, which will then be considered a default of some sort, then Sri Lanka can save those dollars and after restructuring properly the debt, be able to avoid bankruptcy. My view is that it should not be repaid. We are unable to pay it because if we do, we'll be doing so at the expense of future liabilities. So, uh, those who own money is given to us, which come up for maturity later. Restructuring alone won't do. It will have to come a package of reform, tax increases, controls over procurements, and, and so many other things to demonstrate that Sri Lanka will change its course and will be therefore be able in two or three years' time to honor the obligations which are going to be restructured. Any responsible government would have a long time ago tried to renegotiate the debt. We cannot afford to pay either this 500 million or I think the even bigger amount, if I'm not mistaken, due in June. So any responsible government won't go around for as bravado saying, oh, we are going to pay it, we are going to pay it, knowing very well that the country won't have food. This 500 million is basically sufficient to finance imports of 
girl for maybe two and a half months, or we may be a, we can buy pharmaceuticals for an entire year, or it is enough to finance even two years of our fertilizer import. So in these circumstances, I think it is in the best interest of all Sri Lankan for the government to defer payment until the economy can fully recover and rebuild. What would happen is that even if we pay the first 500 million worth of uh, international sovereign bonds on 18th of January, most likely there will be a default of the bond that would be due in uh, uh, later in this year. So as a result, Sri Lanka will have to default its payments as a result of that. So because of this reason, in terms of economics, it is necessary for the country to make a judgment today making a real assessment of the priorities that we are having and decide whether to pay the uh, sovereign bonds or whether to use that money for the purpose of importing other requirements for the country. However, Central Bank Governor Ajit Nivad Kabral commenting on the matter says, those who screamed Sri Lanka would be unable to pay ISBs maturing on the 22nd of January are now opposing the payment as they prepare to make it. At a time when Sri Lanka has been forced to consolidate its liquid reserves through the sale of gold, why do authorities continue to disregard the advice of learned experts?